Patty made her name sharing a stage with Meatloaf for the best part of 20 years. She's now doing shows under her own name. I caught up with Patty a few days ago and asked her how her link up with the big man came about. Funny enough, I mean, it's one of those crazy stories. I answered a an advert in one of the music papers. Um, just happened to be at my day job. I was working in a hair salon uh, and uh, had gigs at night working with a club band and uh, just I randomly ran next door to go pick up a newspaper, a New York paper called The Village Voice, uh, and just look at, at the uh, classifieds in the back. And there was a there was an ad uh, uh, for an international rock star seeking a female vocalist with, I think, comedic timing and an open mind. It's exactly <laughs> what... So I was like, okay, this should be... This could be interesting. And it was... It was uh, yeah, so phoned it up. I had to submit some... Uh, uh, pictures, which was odd because working in a hair salon, we get crazy and things get uh, a bit hectic. And I had long hair at the time and it decided the one day to just chop it all off. And so I went from this big, long mane to a Liza Minnelli type of do. And uh, when I had to answer the ad, uh, I didn't have, uh, I had the pictures with my with my long hair and taking these headshots. So I decided I took it upon myself to take one of the other headshots, I put, I, I sent them the original one with the long hair, and I put a little arrow underneath, and I put over, please, and then took another picture and cut out all the hair, <laughs> and just, just taped it on there, and they said, well, we need to meet this girl. <laughs> and what was the audition like? Was it an audition? It was, yeah. In the beginning, it was all, all well and good, um, because they, you know, they, it wasn't like one of these, you know, where you walk into a room and there's shit, just all these cackling hands running around. Um, so I was, I have to say, it was quite comfortable and uh, and all of that. But let's cut to the second audition, shall we? Because another callback, and apparently I missed the memo and did not get the memo. And apparently they, I walk into a room on my second audition and walk into a room and everybody's dressed in white. Uh, and, of course, not me. Uh and unbeknownst to me, I mean, he, he I guess he had this concept for, I think the video was already filmed for Anything for Love. So he wanted to, you know, uh, see all these uh, women in dressed in white. And I come walking in wearing, you know, wearing black, you know, and uh, maybe a little floral design here and there. But so that was, I mean, I was freaking out and I was like, oh, my God. You know, and I went to the uh, musical director at the time and I was like, what's going on here? And I, 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 so I panicked. I was panicked, I freaked, um, but uh, then there was a couple of other uh, callbacks because they were hemming and hawing whether or not they were going to use two girls, one, and uh, apparently, this is true on my part, who saw it, I'm not sure, but when I left on my final audition, um, I had a friend of mine come with me and he, I had him, because uh, in Manhattan, you know, to park your car, they immediately tow it, uh, and I just didn't have any time to get into a, a garage, as you say. Um, so I had a friend of mine just sunning himself on the roof of my car and he was across the way and he kind of looks at me, sees me come out and he gives me the thumbs up and he's like, you know, like, how did it go? And I just kind of put my hands up and I was like, I wasn't sure. And just as I did that, uh, a city bus drove by and I mean, it nearly ran me over and I, I was just so full of emotion and, and all of uncertainty that I just kicked the bus. And <laughs> I kicked it pretty hard. <laughs> and apparently they were watching me, some of the band members or meet. I don't know. They saw the whole thing unfold. And uh, yeah, so, but I did kick the bus. Yeah. And you had 20 years as part of Meat Love's band. 20 years I was a meat paddy. <laughs> <laughs> many, many highlights, no doubt. If, if you had to choose one of them that you'd love to relive again, anything that springs to mind? Uh, you know, all I mean, every, you know, it's just at the moment, you know, I was talking about uh, my moment doing Madison Square Garden, which was a personal uh, uh, moment for me because I had never gone, you know, that's the big, that's like the mecca of, uh, of venues uh, in New York, you know, to have played the garden. I mean, songs have been written about the garden. Everybody knows Madison Square Garden. And I had never walked into the garden before. And I had made it a point to... And I said to myself years before um, that the day I walk into the garden, I want to be on a stage. And that day came and I think it was 94. We actually played. It was uh, it was a snowstorm. Everybody, you know, coming into the city. It was a February, you know, blizzard conditions. 
but uh, and there I was, you know, and I and it was a moment I'll never forget being on that stage and looking out, and and I was like I said it years earlier that uh, I wanted to be on that stage, walking you know walking into the garden, and it happened. So this prayer was very it was quite emotional for me, I must say. Obviously, Meat is a pretty full on on stage. What about off stage? Yeah, yeah, no, he's you know big uh, teddy bear. You know, there's the uh, the character because he performs in you know. They're characters for him. Each each of these pieces that Simon wrote, you know, they're little mini theatrical performances. So he develops the character for each one of them, and uh, you go along with it. It's good. It was great fun. Yeah. Featuring the wonderful voice of my music guest on the program tonight, to Patty Russo. More from Patty in a couple of hours' time at about six forty-five. There she was with Meatloaf from an album going back to nineteen ninety-five. Welcome to the neighborhoods. I'd lie for you, and that's the truth. American rock star Patty Russo is my guest on the programme this evening. We heard from her in the first hour of Drive Time. Let's hear again from her now, because as well as her long work with Meatloaf, she was sharing stages and studios with Meatloaf for about 20 years. She's also done quite a bit of work in the theatre, including playing the part of Esmeralda in Notre Dame on in London's West End. So... How did all that come about? Meat was off doing a movie, so none of us were, uh, you know, the band. We were pretty much, you know, off doing our own things. And uh, Meat's booking agent at the time, uh, uh, John Giddings, had phoned me up uh, because he was uh, with Tina Arena, was going to uh, was slated to play the role of Esmeralda, opening up on uh, on the West End. And uh, but Tina was only going to be doing it for a short time. And John just phoned me up and he's like, "Listen, I don't know what you're doing, but." You know, um, uh, I'm representing Tina. He goes, but I think, you know, she's going to be there for a short time, but I think you'd be absolutely brilliant in this role of Esmeralda. And I was like, John, you know, thank you. <laughs> oh, but I've never acted before. I wouldn't even know where to begin. And he's like, well, there's really, there's no speaking. It's all singing. He goes, I think you'd be absolutely brilliant. And, uh, performing it, there's, there's a show going on at the Paris in Vegas, um, and you should go see it. So I flew out to Vegas and I saw the show and I was like, ah, I could totally do this. Like, oh, this is interesting. Come back to New York. And before I even had an audition, I booked my flight to come to England. And uh, John was like, because we had a deal with the, uh, there was uh, the people uh, in uh, Montreal as well as, as, as Paris. So, you know, you just don't go off and just book a ticket. But I did. And I was like, John, trust me, get me the audition and I'll get the, uh, the gig is mine. And I got it. So <laughs> it was pretty incredible that I actually got the gig. And it was fascinating. It was great fun. You know, a lot of discipline. I wasn't used to, uh, you know, that type of work where everything was regimented. And that particular show, um, we were performing to track. There wasn't an orchestra. So if you missed your mark, uh, which I, you know, there were a couple of instances that you, I had to be at, at a certain place at a certain time. And I don't know what was going on in the theater that night, but uh, it was a slippery, uh, you know, the floor was quite slippery. Dancers barefoot, you've got climbers, everything going on. And of course, I'm barefoot. And uh, there was a scene where I had to run. I, th- uh, I think my the one who was taking care of me had, had been shot or something. He was on, He was about to die. And... It was his line to sing like Esmeralda, I die, and I still couldn't get there, and I'm and I had to push through these gates, and I am, ju- I mean, I would love to see if anybody had a copy of that because <laughs> it was just like you know, like Bambi on ice trying to get to crawl to him because I, Esmeralda had to be there for him to say it. So uh, yeah, there was there were some interesting moments there. But, you've, uh, you've also played the role of Killer Queen, haven't you? I did. How cool is that? I actually read for that. Um, Brian had phoned me up. I was finishing Notre Dame. And uh, they were getting dire- uh, getting ready to put the... Uh, just in its infancy stages. Uh, it, and uh, they uh, Brian asked me if I would, uh, you know, come over and, and, and read read for the part. And uh, which I did, you know. And then we did a presentation... Uh, of course, you know, we were all with, uh, you know, books in hand and kind of, you know, had no, there was no idea of what Killer Queen was going to look like at the time. But I figured she was a businesswoman and it just took liberty. So I, you know, I came in with a business suit, hair all slicked back, you know, just, and it was, uh, it was an interesting, uh, uh, it, 
uh, interesting performance, interesting to be involved in something like that from the, from the beginning. Uh, you know, of course, they had uh, casted, went in a, in a, uh, uh, chosen their cast for, for London. Uh, and then I, you know, I, I was back out on the road with Meat. And it was great to, uh, to have Brian phone me up again when they were talking about uh, doing it in Vegas. So I got, I was actually able to do Killer Queen. Yeah. <laughs> Let's fast forward to 2014 because you're about to embark on a UK tour, which includes a date at the O2 in Islington in yeah. London. Do you think this is the time for, for Patty Russo to step out and, and, and go under the spotlight, do her own thing now properly? I, you know what? I, this is uh, actually, this is the time. And uh, because everything is lined up. I mean, I, I, as I said, you, you can't write this. You know, I've tried a couple of times. Um, there was a time when I was, uh, I'd gone out and started doing some writing, and it's just nothing was quite happening. I was doing some gigs. I hooked up with a band. I was going off to do these uh, Umbria jazz festivals in Italy, uh, and you know, really honing in on, on my songwriting and all of that. But nothing was. It wasn't working right. So. Um, for, for for this moment in time for myself right now couldn't be more perfect i mean i'm uh hitting a milestone in terms of age uh turning 50 in may and it and this is something that i wanted since i was a child so now is the time to do it if i don't do it now i don't want to be that person three years from now that's going to sit there and go coulda shoulda woulda i'm just going for it steven that's it. And I'm having a blast so far. I mean, I'm talking to you on the phone. Three months ago, this was, this was you know, just a, a concept. And here I am. So I think, yeah, perfect timing. <laughs> well, we wish you well with, with the project, Patty. I'm thank sure you it'll be so a, much. A yeah. rip-roaring success. You've well, done so much work with other people down the years. Yeah, uh, thank you. Know, a lot of theatrical work as well. I, uh, you'll be creating pure theatre yourself now, I hear. I am. As we speak, this is writing itself, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great birthday as well. Oh, thank you so much. Much. Yeah, the how are you 5-0, I'm calling it, instead of Hawaii 5-0. <laughs> so it's a fitting name. You're catching me up, Patty. Okay, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got a song of yours to play now from your forthcoming EP, and, and one that I understand was covered by a jazz singer not so long ago, Betty Harris. Yeah, yeah. It was funny because it was, uh, you know, because I think Betty, I couldn't believe that she actually recorded it because I believe her father was a preacher. And uh, this was a track, actually, I'd, I'd gone off to... Uh, uh, took a bit of a sabbatical from Meatloaf in 2006 and uh, actually phoned up Brian. I wanted to go to Nashville to do some writing and Brian introduced me to someone, made a connection via email uh, to this gentleman named John Tiven, who I met once I got to Nashville and uh, went to his home, went to his studio and uh, this was the first time that I was actually, because normally when I was writing, I couldn't write to other people's tracks. It, I had to come up with a concept. It just didn't, I, I wasn't there yet. Um, in terms of hearing other people's music and trying to come up with an idea. But in any event, I jumped in uh, and, uh, you know, went through his uh, catalog of music. And I just started hearing, you know, going through some random tracks and seeing what I could write a melody and some lyrics to. And one of those was uh, that particular song. And um, I actually, uh, true story, as the name, <laughs> you know, as the name uh, it gives it all away, it was written with... A Bible and a beer on the table. It was a Corona at the time. I wish it was a proper pint, but I was in Nashville. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and the song came out. And, uh, yeah, and Betty Harris, preacher, <laughs> the daughter of a preacher, actually recorded that song. So. Well, let's hear your own version now. Patty oh, Russo, yeah. great having you on the program. Oh, thank you thank for joining you us. Thank you so much, Stephen. All the best. Cheers. Great voice of Patty Russo on tour very soon. Not coming to this part of the world, but she is playing at the O2 Islington in North London. A Bible and a beer. That's from her forthcoming EP. Thanks again to Patty for taking time out to have a chat with me towards the end of last week.